everyone. I'm standing in our yard under my favorite tree. This is a chestnut crab. So I grew up on applesauce made from this particular crab. You've probably seen pictures of it on my Instagram and Facebook page. We believe this tree was planted sometime in the 1960s. So it's probably somewhere between 50 and 60 years old. It's had some issues the last few years. One of the main trunks was removed a few years back due to fire blight. And you can see there's some branches up here that also were blighted. So that was the first concerning, like the red flag, oh my gosh, we could lose this tree. Then the carpenter ants moved in last year and created well you can see the evidence of it down here there was a lot of sawdust last year normally you would remove all of these water sprouts going up the tree but we had some conflicting advice one expert said you, that water sprouts are not ideal for collecting thion wood to graft a tree and we had another expert tell us that oh no those are desirable so we left some of the water shoots grow and um, collected some more of those shoots this last year to do some additional grafting i do have two trees that i planted last fall that were successfully grafted but i want an insurance policy so we're gonna graft a few more and make sure that we don't lose this tree. Trees are the ultimate bioaccumulators. Their roots go so deep into the ground and their spread is so wide that they just gather up a lot of fertility. In the fall, when they start to turn colors, the dead leaves have very little fertility in them as the tree uses up whatever was photosynthesized. But the apples, the fruit itself, that has a lot of fertility. When I gather up the dried leaves and the apples in the fall and in the spring, I usually put them under the lilac tree. So you can see this spring, Dan and I piled the leaves and the apples from the apple tree under this lilac tree. My goal today is to scoop this up to use as a mulch. It just rained last night, so it's mucky. Last year I had NDSU graft this chestnut crab for me onto some rootstock and I planted it just south of the yard here. Uh, where it would receive full sun. So here's my new grafted chestnut crab. Isn't it gorgeous? And I, I do need to stake it as well. But you can see when I dug the hole, I just dug a ring all the way around. And then I took that sod, sliced it, sliced a cut through here. So I could fit that ring right around the base of the chestnut crab. So I literally just took that disc of sod that I dug up and it was probably about six to eight inches thick. I flipped it over with that cut and just surrounded the, my new planting with the sod that I cut out. I'm just gonna mulch with the apple mulch that I picked up around the tree and just dump this right around my new tree have to excuse the din that you hear. The grackles are teaching their young ones how to fly out of the nest. Taylor made mulch, courtesy of the old chestnut crab. So all the nutrients that a chestnut crab tree like this would want is in this refuse that came from the old chestnut crab. And you might wonder why I didn't clip any of this grass. And we have a lot of deer pressure around here. And I didn't want to make it any easier for the deer to find this tree. 
You can see here, this is a deer bed and it's only just a few feet away from my apple tree. So we need to remedy that, try to protect this tree from the deer. And so I have this little device that we deploy on our farm. It's called a predator eye. This is the older model that we used to get. And I couldn't find that one, so I bought some new ones. This is off of Amazon. So if I cover up the sensors here, maybe you can see that. It flashes bright red color. The deer think that it's a predator. So I'm going to position this stake. So one of them is facing east and one is facing west. Because I know that from the deer trails that these deer travel mostly east to west. And I zip tied it to the post. And hopefully that will protect my new chestnut crab from these destructive browsers. Mission accomplished.